Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, it's Friday, December 11. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi, and it's another bleak milestone in the coronavirus pandemic. Today, we crossed the 100,000 mark for cases in San Diego County. Also, 2,867 cases were just reported and 23 deaths. With that comes concerns about ICU capacity and nurse to patient staffing ratios. As KPBS North County reporter Jacob Ayer shows us, nurses gathered outside Palomar Medical Center, Poway, to sound the alarm. Nurses and caregivers with the California Nurses Association came together today to speak out against Palomar Health's waiver request, which would let the hospital increase the number of patients nurses can be assigned for a unit with mixed critical and intermediate care needs. The state has already approved the request, but it hasn't been implemented yet. Joanne Meza is a union representative for the California Nurses Association and also happens to work on the front lines fighting the COVID-19 pandemic as an ICU nurse at Palomar Health. She says implementing the changes would cause safety hazards. Palomar claims that they're, they took a hit due to the pandemic, but it's the nurses and caregivers who are taking the hit in the form of increased patient loads, unsafe staffing levels, and inadequate PPE, and struggling to fight back dangers of commingling of patients. In response to the union's claims, Palomar Health CEO Diane Hansen said, their organization has always provided safe medical care and would never put patients or staff at risk. We do our best to cohort the COVID patients in one area and the non-COVID patients in another area. So there is absolutely no commingling of patients. We are doing, as we have from the onset of this pandemic back in March, we're doing absolutely everything we can to keep our patients, our staff, our physicians as safe as possible. Hansen says the waiver only applies to a single unit at the Poway facility and would change the ratio from two patients per nurse to three. It does apply to only one 12-bed unit in our Poway facility. It will give us the ability to move patients out of the ED and into a nursing unit um, with both critical care level um, patients and then intermediate care uh, patients. Meza says the facility is already spread thin and the change would only increase the demand on an exhausted medical staff. Do not take our ratios away. Give us more staff. Give us what we need. Give us our PPE and please do not make us reuse our PPE. That's not what it's intended for. Palomar Health says they are still trying to add more staff and have not yet implemented any of the changes granted by the waiver. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. The dwindling ICU capacity during the pandemic is presenting hospitals with difficult decisions. KPBS health reporter Taryn Mento asked UC San Diego Health how it's managing resources as its ICU capacity recently reached 109 percent. About a quarter of UCSD's ICU patients are coming for COVID treatment. Scripps and Sharp are larger, but data they provided showed their ICUs are around 90% full, with 40 to nearly 50% of COVID patients. UCSD's chief clinical officer, Margarita Baggett, says the other patients in their ICU include those in its burn unit, which is the only one in the region, and trauma patients. So we're seeing a lot more gunshot wounds, motor vehicle accidents, drunk driving again, so we are, right now I had to open up an extra overflow unit so I could decant the amount of high level trauma patients. I never had to do that before. Some beds are also holding surgery patients. Baggett says UCSD is evaluating how to pull back on non-urgent procedures to create more room for COVID patients. We get more demand, um, not only our own patient population, but requests from other hospitals. 
we are postponing elective surgeries. We're not postponing all, but we're looking at a certain percentage that we need to to help the community and to help our own patients. But she says UCSD has already had to turn down transfer requests from other facilities. Is there a decision you've had to make that keeps you up at night? Is there a decision? I think what's keeping me up at night if I have to start making these decisions. So right now it hasn't been a decision because you mentioned earlier that, you know, you have had to say no to some transfers. And so, yes, that... in my mind, walking the dog last night. Yes. You, I, I don't know the outcome of that patient. You know what I mean? So yeah. Would I worry that? You know, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. It's a very, it's a horrible time we're in right now. The region-wide ICU capacity for Southern California, which includes San Diego County, hit 6.2 percent today. That figure was just below 15 percent last week when the new regional stay-home order was triggered. Taryn Mento, KPBS News. As our coronavirus coverage continues, we want to know how the disease is costing patients. KPBS and iNews Source are asking for your help to learn what health care providers are charging you for testing and for treatment. Tell us your story. Show us your medical bills. Go to kpbs.org slash COVID costs. And the first Americans could get a COVID-19 vaccine as soon as Monday or Tuesday. However, it's not a done deal just yet. And as Nadia Romero reports, there's still a major roadblock on Capitol Hill over a new relief bill. FedEx and UPS on standby, ready to distribute COVID-19 vaccines as they enter the market. First up, Pfizer-BioNTech's vaccine, which is expected to get an emergency use authorization from the FDA any time now. But the injections can't start until the CDC authorizes the vaccine for use. They want to look at the numbers of, of, of individuals enrolled uh, and make sure that the data is robust enough to make a recommendation across the board. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says the current timeline means some Americans can get the vaccine as soon as Monday or Tuesday. We're looking at 20 million Americans being vaccinated just in the next coming weeks, up to 50 million total by the end of January. Meanwhile, some Americans are hanging by a thread. I have to take the bills and throw them up and pick the ones and hope that they total the amount that I have. But Democrats and Republicans continue to feud over aspects of the COVID-19 relief package, including stimulus checks for Americans and liability protections for corporations. Struggling families, exhausted health workers, and anxious small business owners are waiting, waiting for the Senate. No relief for the American people unless corporations receive blanket immunity from lawsuits. That particular poison pill that has foiled part bipartisan agreement for more than eight months is the nub of the problem. In Washington, Nadia Romero, KPBS News. Today is San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria's first full day in office. He was sworn in along with five new city council members in a virtual ceremony yesterday. The city is facing a $45 million mid-year budget gap while projecting a $124 million budget deficit for the next fiscal year. Gloria says without additional federal relief, significant cuts would have to be made. This is urgent, it's critical. I recognize the new Biden-Harris administration may pass stimulus of their own, uh, but we need help right now. Uh, we need help uh, after the new administration takes, uh, takes office in Washington, D.C. Uh, this, again, will be determinative about uh, what levels of service we can provide to the community. Gloria says he is reaching out to San Diego's congressional delegation, encouraging them to pass new coronavirus relief legislation. SDSU's Miro Kopik has more on the budget shortfall the mayor is inheriting and safely reopening the economy in the Friday Business Report. Hi, Todd Gloria. Do solemnly swear. I would say that he has to hit the ground running. He's got a you know, politically aligned city council that will hopefully allow him to do certain things. But here's the issues that he, that he deals with. The city's facing a $126 million budget shortfall that he inherits. This relief aid is ending very shortly. And so uh, the city's 
facing this this budget crisis. Right now, we don't have enough workers in in roles in the city. The uh, budget analyst for the city noted that there's going to be three years of budget shortfalls that we have to make up either by freezing expenditures or not increasing pay. And in this context, there's the issues around, you know, what's the city going to do to help open the economy and enhance the business environment? Priority number one for the mayor is getting the city safely open. So getting those vaccines out and it, making sure that the city helps that process along is job number one for the mayor. A freshly inaugurated San Diego City Council has selected Jen Campbell as its next council president. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen says the decision came after a long and contentious meeting. Campbell beat out Councilmember Monica Montgomery Stepp for the position. In prepared remarks, Campbell said she had spent her two years in office putting the city's interests ahead of her own political gain. My entire vision as council president is predicated on making sure that each one of our nine council districts and their representatives can succeed at improving their communities while advancing the goals of our city at the same time. Campbell won in a 5-4 vote. That's despite Montgomery Step having overwhelming support from community organizations and those who gave public comment during the meeting. Montgomery Step said she wanted the city to focus more on correcting racial and social inequity. We're looking at a city where in my community, parents cannot allow their children to bike down the road because they don't want them to get hurt or uh, slamming into a pothole. All I want to do is ensure that San Diego is the same for all of us. The council presidency can be one of the most powerful positions in city government, with the power to run meetings, give out committee assignments, and set the council's agendas. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. The San Diego Sheriff's Department has backed off a policy of publicly posting the release dates of people in its custody. Immigrant advocates say the information was being used by Immigration and Customs Enforcement to help in its arrests of immigrants for possible deportation. The sheriff began posting the release dates shortly after a 2017 law went into effect, which aimed to curb local law enforcement's relationship with ICE. For now, this is a big win for our communities because we're making things harder for them. You know, sometimes we might not fully be able to stop their actions, but we can definitely make things harder for them. And then that way mitigates the impact in our communities and reduces the, the amount of people affected by it. The change by the sheriff's department came after two years of protests by immigrant advocates. Last month, during a public forum in front of county supervisors, Sheriff Bill Gore pledged to work with community groups to change the practice. The coronavirus outbreak at the San Diego Convention Center is now up to 120 cases. The outbreak at the emergency homeless shelter was first reported last Saturday with 27 cases. Those who tested positive are now staying at ho local hotels to safely quarantine. The city says ongoing prevention measures at the shelter include screening clients and staff, cleaning, wearing a face, coverings and social distancing. When the pandemic first forced their shutdown in March, some farmers markets were able to reopen and recover sooner than others. KPBS reporter Max Rivlin Nadler tells us the City Heights Farmers Market has only just recently reopened, providing a vital service to the community and local farmers every Saturday. For months, the San Diego Farm Bureau, which runs the City Heights Farmers Market, looked for the funding to safely reopen their market. Due to the city mandates, we actually had to increase our staffing. Brandon Janis is the manager of the farmer's market. As capacity dropped due to COVID concerns, the amount of staff had to be increased to ensure safety. With less money coming in while costs went up, a grant from the City Heights Community Development Corporation was needed for the market to safely reopen this November. During that time, Janice said that local farmers struggled. Well, I know for them with this market being closed, I don't think that they do many other markets in the area. So for them, that's a complete revenue loss. I know the refugee farmers 
didn't even farm their plots for a while until we gave them notice that we were going to be reopening and then they started to plant things again in expectation of being back here. Bernardino Loera is one of the farmers who's been with the market since its opening a decade ago. This is where we live, where we live from. Mm -hmm. If we don't do the markets, it's, we're, we're, we're a little bit short. Luera says he's glad that so far, farmers markets haven't been impacted by the latest round of shutdowns. A few of the other markets he sells at still haven't reopened. We hope we, they don't close. It's very important for us because we have bills to pay and if we don't do this market, it's one of our best markets. The City Heights Farmers Market is open for the foreseeable future from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday on the corner of Whiteman Street and Fairmont Avenue in City Heights. Max of the Nadler, KPBS News. 29 days later, the mayor of National City says her COVID-19 vaccine trial is still going well. Today, Alejandra Sotelo Solis had her second follow-up appointment for a UC San Diego health vaccine trial. Her dose from Johnson & Johnson is just one shot. One reason she signed up for the trial was to show people the vaccine is safe. She said she was even able to inspire her own dad to get the vaccine once it's widely available. If my dad who I love so much, has the trust in me, in his life, to say that I will be willing to take the vaccine, that to me means so much. And if I can do that for other dads and other moms and other community members, then so be it. Sotelo Solis said her arm hurt for a couple of days after the initial vaccine, similar to a flu shot. But other than that, and a headache, she didn't have any symptoms. The UC San Diego Health Vaccine Trial is still looking for some participants ages 18 and over. How do you take an organization that relies on people coming together and keep it going during a time when people can't come together? In this pandemic profile, KPBS reporter John Carroll talks to the leader of San Diego's largest Muslim congregation to see how they're making it through the crisis. God can be worshipped anywhere on earth. That statement by Imam Taha Hassan could probably be agreed to by just about every religious leader on the planet. But of course, when you're talking about organized religion, it's not quite that simple. Hassan leads San Diego's largest Muslim congregation here at the Islamic Center of San Diego in Claremont. At the very beginning, we had no idea about what's going on and how we should operate. What Hassan did know back then was the mosque portion of the Islamic Center, this prayer hall, could not be used. That meant, for the time being, coming to terms with a different approach. So my home should become my house of worship with my family members. Whatever I used to do in the mosque, now I do it at home. But most Muslims don't have an imam under their roof, so like countless other members of the clergy, Hassan had to figure out how to take things online with some help. Thank God we have smart people in the community, uh, young people who are into this technology, and in a matter of a few days, highly came together about and they installed all this system, the online system. So we broadcast live on YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, uh, live on Facebook. But there was still some in-person worship. When the pandemic hit, the Islamic Center, like many churches and synagogues throughout the county that have appropriate outdoor space, moved their services outdoors. And then, more than three weeks ago, when we moved into the purple tier, the center once again moved their services outdoors here to their playground. If places of worship are allowed to once again have a limited number of people inside before the pandemic ends, the Islamic Center is ready. You can see the tape marking on the floor from when they were allowed to have a handful of worshipers inside prior to the county moving into the purple tier. But now, with vaccines expected to be distributed soon, Hassan is looking to the future when his entire congregation can once again fill this hallowed space. But even then, things will never be the same. Lessons have been learned, and Hassan says that's a good thing. We as clergy, as uh, faith leaders, we should not just stay in our comfort zone, in our house of worship, in our offices, and wait for people to come to us. We need to learn how to reach them out wherever they are. In the midst of the unimaginable tragedy of this pandemic, the unspeakable grief suffered by so many, 
It's reassuring to think that the re-examination of things once taken for granted has meant they are now cherished, leading to a sense of hope for the world waiting on the other side. John Carroll, KPBS News. We are talking about some of those coastal clouds still sticking around with us as we head into tonight. Nothing too out of the ordinary. There will be moisture well to our north and central California, but we miss out on it, which means the dry weather continues here right into the weekend. And once we watch through the weekend, we will have some breezy conditions into the mountains. So you know what that means? The risk for fire danger does elevate. Satellite radar showing, hey, here's a storm system trying to work into portions of the Golden State. So we do have some of that moisture trying to creep through. Not much making it to the ground, but as you look off towards the south, we're still waiting for that to make an entrance and we won't see it really make an entrance in our area. Not too far to the north, they will get some of that moisture to the mountains north of LA, but for the most part, we are quiet here. And as you can tell, Escondido coming in at 45 for that low. Just a few clouds out there towards the coast. Futurecast does pick up on that. You do have the moisture here uh, near the coast. Some of those coastal clouds working in over land. And then notice off towards the north, kind of behind the banner, that's where we have some of those rain showers. Again, in the mountains north of LA, doesn't get any closer than that for us as it moves off towards the east then. And we're left with a dry, sunny day tomorrow. Looking pretty quiet. I think that icon there for Chula Vista is wrong, but you can tell most of the numbers here holding on to the 60s and feeling pretty comfortable out there. The coast dealing with temperatures in the lower 60s, still kind of a cool trend, but we do warm up back to the lower 70s for Sunday. Monday staying fairly mild. Next few days here inland, uh, we're looking at pretty quiet conditions, sun and clouds. And as we work our way then to the mountains, note there will be that condition where we do start to see the winds pick up into Sunday morning temperatures fall uh, rising to the mid 50s then and the desert we do have plenty of sunshine pretty quiet times and 60s in the days ahead. For KBBS News, I'm meteorologist Melissa Constancer. San Diego Opera is planning a drive-in screening of its All is Calm, the Christmas Truce of 1914. The production was recorded by KPBS for a broadcast back in 2018. KPBS arts reporter Beth Accomando looks to the challenges of planning events as lockdown rules keep changing. Back in 2016, San Diego Opera's new director, David Bennett, held community meetings to help the company redefine itself and its core values after facing a financial crisis. Adaptability, sustainability. And it's actually one of our core values that the company created. It says, through nimble adaptation to the changing marketplace, we preserve the future of San Diego Opera. That was written as a response to the near closure, and I think in terms, was really thought about financial changing marketplace. But boy, are those words never more true than they are right now. And so we have to learn to be nimble. And you, the word pivot is right. And pivoting is key right now as San Diego Opera tries to plan its year end production of All is Calm with pandemic guidelines in flux. Well, calm is a good word, isn't it? So we are we're trying to remain calm uh, in a shifting sea, right, of circumstances. The circumstances currently testing San Diego Opera involve the uncertainty of exactly what its year end event can be. Concerns over safety with COVID-19 cases surging led the company to cancel a live performance and instead opt for a drive-in screening of All is Calm that KPBS shot in 2018. We know that drive-in movies are an approved activity even with the new announcement by the governor. So we know that aspect of it is going to be approved and can be safe. We are still getting approval of whether we can have the 30 minute concert of live singing that we are trying to hold. Back in October, San Diego Opera built an outdoor stage to hold its first ever live drive-in production. The opera was La Boheme and each singer required 120 square feet of space and had to be 15 feet away from anyone they were facing. All is Calm, however, deals with enemy soldiers coming together during World War I to enjoy an impromptu Christmas truce. That presented too many staging challenges to afford each singer 120 square feet of space, especially when the soldiers start in the trenches and then need to mingle together in no man's land. 
That's when San Diego Opera decided to take advantage of the filmed version of the production. And since it had success with its drive-in La Boheme, it decided to stage a drive-in movie. What we learned from the La Boheme that we did in October is we're missing not just seeing live performance, but everyone is missing a communal experience, right? We spend so much of our time in a conversation like I'm having with you right now, where we're all in our own individual homes, right? And the opportunity is for, for us to find a way to be together as a community safely is a very important thing. A sense of communal experience is central to All Is Calm, where enemy soldiers were close enough to hear each other sing. It was actually soldier to soldier, hearing the singing across no man's land in the opposite trenches and coming out and actually sharing the experience of Christmas Eve together. For a single night, no man's land was every man's land. And we, the lowest of the ranks, achieved what the Pope himself could not. In the middle of the war, we had ourselves a Merry Christmas. Uh, so it really is a story about using Christmas as an opportunity for a collective communal experience. All is Calm is a co-presentation of San Diego Opera, Bodhi Tree Concerts, and Sacra Profana. The drive-in screening takes place on December 21st at the Del Mar Fairgrounds parking lot. Beth Accomando, KPBS News. Birch Aquarium is making a splash virtually to get everyone into the holiday spirit. Tune in live this weekend to see Scuba Santa and his elf feed the fish in the giant kelp forest. You can see leopard sharks, moray eels, and a 300-pound endangered giant black sea bass. You can even ask questions live. It starts this Saturday at 10 a.m. on the Birch Aquarium Facebook page. Don't miss it. And you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following, and by viewers like you. Thank you.